Before we start making wall jump and other stuff, I just want to tell you I'm not going to make everything from the scratch. Recently, I made a video on 2D player movement, so I'm going to add wall jump and other mechanics in that same script. So if you haven't watched that video, then don't worry, I have given link of the code in the description. You can copy the code and follow this video. Also in that video, I have shown you some of the important tricks. But there was one problem. You see, when you press both left and right key at the same time, the player goes in the right direction. But the player should stop moving in this situation. So for that, when we are detecting the right arrow key, we need to add one more condition that will make sure the left arrow key is not pressed. Similarly, we will make sure when we press the left arrow key, the right arrow key is not pressed. And now our player will not move when we press both keys at the same time. Now coming to this video, the first thing we are going to add is double jump. For this, create a variable jump counter. This will keep track of how many jumps we have done while we are in the air. So by default, it will be zero. Now if you remember in the previous video, when we are pressing the jump button, we are setting the jump buffer counter. So when we are not on the ground, we check if buffer counter is greater than zero. This will be true only when we have pressed the jump button. Other than this, we will also make sure the jump counter is less than one. This will make sure we only jump once when we are in the air. Now inside it, we set the carry counter to any number greater than zero. This is because if you remember, when we are jumping, we are checking for two things. One is buffer counter and other is carry counter. So when we press the jump button, the jump buffer counter is going to be greater than zero. And the only other thing we need for jump is to set carry counter greater than zero. And this is exactly what we are doing here. Also, we have to increment the jump counter by one. And at last, when we are on the ground, we want to set the jump counter back to zero. And that's it. Just by few lines of code, we have successfully added double jump to our game. And for the bonus, if you want to do triple jump, all you have to do is change this one to two. And now you can jump two times in the air, which will make it triple jump. Now moving to our next mechanic, which is wall climbing. To make our player climb the wall, it should first detect the wall. And for that, I'm going to add a ray cache node to the player. Since my player's sprite is 128 pixel wide, that's why I'm going to set the position of the ray cache node to half of 128 pixel, which is 64 pixel. This will position the ray cache node on the edge of the sprite. Now we will cast this ray to just 10 pixel on the x-axis. And finally, you should set the collision mass according to your game. Now coming to the script, first create a variable that contain the ray cache node. Now you want to do wall climbing when we are not underground. So inside this function, we will remove this jump counter condition and put that in a separate if statement. Still, this is the same thing as before. Now before this if statement, we are going to add one more if statement, which will contain the wall climbing code and replace the second if statement with else if because we don't want to do wall climbing and double jump at the same time. Now in the first if statement, we check if our ray is colliding or not. And if it is colliding with something, we make sure it is the wall. Now if both of these conditions are satisfied, then we can do the jump. So again, we set the coyote counter to 1. Now come a little bit down where we are pressing the arrow keys. We also want to set the position of ray cache node and cache to property. So for the right key, these are going to be positive 64 and positive 10. And for the left arrow key, they are going to be negative 64 and negative 10. And now you can see our player can climb the wall. But this look very boring. So I also like to push the player away from the wall. Because first, now the player has to press the right arrow key in order to continue the climbing. And second, it create a nice wall climbing animation. So to add this, we check if the sprite is flipped. Because if it is flipped, this means we are going in the left direction and the wall is on the left. So we push the player in the right direction by adding 500 in the velocity.x. Otherwise, we will subtract 500 from it. And just by doing that, it looked like our player is actually jumping in order to climb the wall. Let me tell you one thing. Whatever we did for the wall climbing, this is the same thing that you have to do if you want to create wall jump. And the reason I'm calling this a wall climbing instead of wall jump is that my player can change direction in the midair. And if I couldn't, then I would call it wall jump. Because you should not add wall climbing and wall jump at the same time. So if your player can't change the direction in the air, then you just have to make the player jump in the opposite direction. Now the third mechanic is wall sliding. This is going to be pretty simple. All you have to do is reduce the maximum falling speed when you are on the wall. So as you can see, I have a maximum falling speed variable and set it to 2000. This is a speed that we want to achieve when we are not on the wall. 
Now when we are not on the ground, we are adding gravity to the player. And we make sure that we don't go beyond the maximum falling speed. Now after adding gravity, we will check if the ray is colliding with anything or not. And if it is colliding, then we make sure it is colliding with the walls. And after that, we set the maximum falling speed to 1000. And if the ray is not colliding with anything, we will set it to 2000 again. And that's it for the wall sliding. I really try to keep everything as simple as I could and I hope you found something new in this one. And if you found this video helpful then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe my channel for more amazing videos. If you have any doubt then write down in the comment section and I will try to solve it. So once again thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.